So for the third example, we're going to use polar form in an application. We're going to perform a multiplication by converting each one of the complex numbers to polar form. And then we're going to check the answer by multiplying them directly in rectangular form. So negative 1 plus root 3i. So I'm going to figure out my r there. My r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Let me write these formulas generically. x squared plus y squared. Theta is equal to arctan. of y over x. That's if x is bigger than 0. And we'll have to add on a pi, the fudge factor pi, if x is less than 0. So in the first one, r is equal to 1 squared uh, plus root 3 squared. So that's 3, which is 2, uh, square root of 1 plus 3. Theta is equal to arctan of negative root 3 over 1. Let me write that as root 3 over negative 1. Now I have to add on a pi because the x is negative. Arctan of negative root 3 is negative pi over 3 plus pi. That was a common value that I remembered there. So plus pi gives me 2 pi over 3. So that tells me my r and my theta for the first one. Let me go ahead and figure them out for the second one before I plug them in. For the second one, we have r is equal to the square root of 2 root 3 squared. 2 root 3 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 squared is 4. So 12 plus 4 is 16. That gives me root 16 is 4. Now theta is arctan y over x is 2 over 2 root 3. Ah, but the x coordinate was negative, so again I have to add a pi. So this is arctan 1 over root 3 is root 3 over 3 plus pi. Now again, that's a common value. So arctan of root 3 over 3, I remember that's a common value. That's pi over 6 plus pi is 7 pi over 6. So if I convert one of each one of these numbers into polar form, this one is 2e to the 2 pi over 3i. And this one is or e to the 7 pi over 6 i. Now, I want to multiply those. But remember, multiplying numbers in polar form is very easy. First, you multiply one radius by the other one. So that's 2 times 4 is 8. And then you add the angles, e to the 2 pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 6 i. So you just add the angles. You multiply the, the radius by the other one, and then you add the angles. So that's 8 e to the, let's see, 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 6. So we get 11 pi over 6 i. Now I want to convert that into uh, back into rectangular form. Whoops, I forgot to put my e in there. And I'm going to use this formula, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. That one's really useful. It's definitely worth remembering. So this is 8 cosine 11 pi over 6 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. You could also use x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. You'll end up with the same formula at the end. So either way works. Let me draw a little unit circle to remind me where 11 pi over 6 is. 11 pi over 6 is just short of 2 pi. It's right there. So it's a 30, 30 degree angle south of the x-axis. And the cosine there is 
root 3 over 2. It's positive because we're on the right-hand side. Whoops, root 3 over 2. And the sine is negative 1 half. And so what we get there, that simplifies down to 4 root 3 um, minus 4i. And so now we've done it. We converted each number into polar form. We multiplied them in polar form, which is very easy. And then we converted the polar form back into rectangular form to give us our answer. It says we have to check our answer by multiplying them directly in rectangular form. So let's do the check here. We'll FOIL the multiplication out. So I'll do the check over here. I'll do the check in blue. Um, foiling it out, my first terms give me negative 1 times 2 root 3, so that's 2 root 3, positive 2 root 3. My outer terms give me negative 1 minus 2i, so plus 2i. My inner terms give me minus 2 times root 3 times root 3, so that's 6i. Those are my inner terms. I'm doing FOIL here. First, outer, inner. And my last terms are root 3i minus 2i, so that's minus 2 root 3 i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1, so this counts as plus 2 root 3. And if we simplify that down, we get 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3, 4 root 3, plus 2i minus 6i is minus 4i. And that does indeed check with the answer we got by converting into polar form. So that was kind of a long one. Let's recap what we did there. We had these two complex numbers. We wanted to convert each one into polar form. So for each one, I found my r, and I used x square root of x squared plus y squared. I found my theta using arc tangent of y over x, although in each one, the x's were less than 0, so I had to add on this fudge factor of plus pi to get me into the right quadrant. So I found my r, my theta, another r, my, my other theta. So I converted the, each one into r e to the i theta form. To multiply them together, you multiply the r's, but then you add the thetas because they're up in the exponents. That's the law of exponents there, so we added the, the thetas. We got a simplified polar form. And then we converted back into rectangular form using e to the i theta is equal to i cosine theta plus i sine theta. You could also use x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. You'll get to exactly the same place. I know my cosine and sine of 11 pi over 6. That's a common value. And so I get the answer there. And then to check it, I skipped all the polar forms. I just multiplied everything out using FOIL, simplified it down. And it did indeed check with the answer that I got from using the polar forms. So we'll try some more examples later. You should try them on your own first, and then we'll work on them together.